the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. I started out with this Bible verse because I want to testify to the character, the attributes of the Holy God who has created the heavens and the earth so that there would be no confusion. I do not mean the God of coexist. I've seen coexist stickers on people's cars when I showed up. God is a God of division. He divided truth from lies. He divided light from darkness. He is a God of division. He says, this is truth, and truth is now. And the world is full, filled with lies. And you people that have coexist on your bumper stickers are living a lie. There's only one narrow way to heaven. It's through Jesus Christ. There's no other way to the Father except through Jesus Christ. There will be no coexistence between the world religions in heaven. All, there's only one religion in heaven. It's the religion of love to Jesus Christ. All others will be excluded because God is a God of division. And those that do not live in truth here will not live in truth in heaven. Those that live in lies here will live in hell in the hereafter. So I'm here to testify to the attributes of God that there is truth in the world, one truth, one true religion, one true God. And if you don't know Him, that sort of division will come down on the day of judgment. He says, the God of division will separate the sheep from the goats on the day of judgment. It says this, you might be shocked to know that most people in the world, most people even in the church that calls itself Christian, will be counted a goat. That's what Jesus warned us. He said, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will inherit God's kingdom. Only he who does the will of the Father, which is in heaven. There's one Father, one God, and we can know him. And this Bible tells us all about him. So when people come and tell lies, they're being false witnesses. They're not telling you the truth. And you should not believe them because only the truth will set people free. Testifying again to the attributes of God. He made a separation between the profane and the holy. Did you know that there's many things in the world that God outright hates? Case in point, down here, I'll say it openly because it's on open display. Mad Hatter's Closet, you are displaying very ungodly, profane things that God hates. I read on your website, or my wife did rather, read on your website that this is a Christian community. Why is that tolerated? Where are the people to go down and witness to him and tell him that this is ungodly, this is wrong? God put a division between the profane and the holy. He loves that which is holy and good and pure. He hates that which is sinful and profane. And he put a division. He said he called the light good. And he made that sharp line. What is holy is good. What is light is good. What is darkness is evil. And from the beginning, God has had a division. I already talked about how the God of division will separate sheep and goats on the day of judgment. Jesus told us parables about the wheat and the chaff. The wheat is gathered into his barn. Those are the ones that inherit eternal life. The chaff is thrown into the furnace of fire, unquenchable fire. And God will make this division on Judgment Day. And He will not change His mind after that point. He will not change His mind. He's not a man that He should lie. 
God cannot lie. And he has told us in this book what will happen, that there is a day of judgment when he will make the ultimate separation once and for all. Sinners from saints, holy from profane, wheat from chaff, sheep from goats. And each of you here have an eternal destiny. The division is already going out right now. I'm preaching the word of God. And just like the two thieves on the cross, one on one side, one on the other, the one received the word of God and was saved that very day. The other mocked. And he went to hell. And right now, truth is going out. And there is a division being made. Some of you are already aligned on which side. Some of you are saying, he's crazy. He's a nut. We should run him out of town, not the Mad Hatter. You're already separating yourselves away from God. Some of you, maybe you're glad that somebody finally came to town to speak up, to speak these things, to speak truth. Maybe you're on God's side. I hope there are some that are on God's side. But the Bible says that there will be few, few on the side of God on the day of judgment. It doesn't mean that there couldn't be many. It's just few choose. Few choose God. Another example of God, the divider, that he's a God of division, the rich man and Lazarus. Jesus tells us a story in the Bible about a rich man who passed by a beggar every day. I might be. And he ignored the beggar. He kept ignoring him, kept ignoring him. And then it came to pass that the beggar and the rich man died. Lazarus, the poor man, he went to heaven. But the rich man, he went to hell. And it said he lifted up his eyes in torment and said, God, God, uh, Abraham, please give me one drop of water. One drop. But there was none given. And he said, there's a great cat. Abraham said, there's a great ca chasm between us that none can cross. See, God made a division. He made a division. And they could not cross from one side to the other. Because when you die, your fate is sealed. There are no second chances when you go into eternity. It's either heaven or hell. And some of you, the wrath of God already abides upon you. You're under his judgment. But at the same time, God is merciful and he would call you to repentance. He would take away every sin. He would justify you, wash you as clean, as, as clean as freshly fallen snow if you will turn. Excuse me. walking up and down the street is driving our patrons away and we're trying to fundraise for our churches mm -hmm. and our chamber of commerce and our school groups and this interferes with that and so of course that gets to be a bit of a problem.
it's, the town is very religious. We got all kinds of churches, very religious. But you see, this is the weekend when they make all the money to get them through the whole year, and 90% of it comes from that beer. beer. So you might not want to get too close to there if it gets late.